What's up, it's Gold Fans, back with me, Rocky Padilla, and welcome to a new episode of Travel for Basketball. Today, we're gonna travel to Tacoma. It's like a one hour bus ride from downtown Seattle. We're gonna connect with Coach Chris Haifa. I've been waiting for this collaboration, so I, I'm so, so excited today. And shout out though to my boy, Safda, for introducing me to Coach Chris. So, today, we're gonna watch him train a couple of the top high school kids in Seattle. So this is gonna be a great, great content. Please give me a thumbs up, guys, before you watch this video. So now I'm just waiting for the bus and we're gonna go check out his training session in Tacoma. So let's go. All right, guys, we are here with Coach Chris Hipa. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Chris Hipa, born and raised in Tacoma, Washington. I've uh, been doing full-time skill development now for about 12 years. We're about to get after it. We have four good players, two college players, two of the top high school players in Washington State. So we'll have fun today. Thanks for tuning in. You're a pro coach on with this. And I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> Can you just tell us how did you get into training and coaching? Uh, I think I got into doing skill development. I think every player after they get done playing wants to play overseas, wants to play in the league. Uh, after that, you want to be involved. So I started coaching back in 2003. I've been doing skill development now for the last 15 years. This is my love of the game. I wanted to give back. And uh, I can get paid to train players. That's the best job in the world. Yeah, so what are we going to do today? We're going to do some ball handling, uh -huh. we're going to work on some scoring, we'll do some footwork. Uh, we'll do a variety of, uh, of stuff, but more or less just doing some quick, quick stuff, trying to get them to understand footwork and how it can help them create space, and then we'll, then we'll play a little bit at the end. All right, let's get it then. Let's get it, let's get it. <laughs>
down in five seconds. Ten exact series. Here we go. Inside first. Three, two, go. Push yourself. Push yourself. Push yourself. Push yourself. Is that black ball? The black ball is three pounds, and so mm -hmm. you think about it, why would you lift weights? Why do you run up a hill? Why would you wear a weight vest? If you're bouncing a ball that's three pounds, you get this ball back, this is like 15, out, 15 out ounces. Your hands are gonna be faster, the ball's gonna be lighter, and you're gonna be more confident, and that's how we build ball runners, just trying to trick the mind at the same time, making things feel more like they are. Yes. Great drill. Yes, sir. Okay. That was just warm up? That one, that's kind of like a ball handling warm up. And you mm. think about this, okay? And I relate boxing to also playing hoop. Okay, boxers, when, when they box, they're on their toes. Basketball players have to train themselves to be on their toes. Whether it's doing jump rope stuff or, or doing quick feet stuff like mm. that, we've got to be able to get our feet moving and get on the balls of our feet. So that's a great way to get them going you know, a little bit more quick, especially when they play quick twitch. And you actually are a trainer for Kelsey Plum and also Nate Robinson. I work with Plum, I work with, work with Nate Rob, and I'll just say this real quick, like the thing that separates them from a lot of players that I've worked with is that they are obsessive, and they're obsessed with anything that they can do to improve. Whether it is yoga, nutrition, uh, weightlifting, up in the morning early, up in the, just they are obsessed with trying to improve in any way that they really can. How does it feel though to have that trust? In training. Yeah, so the trust that with both of them had, had been invested early on though when Kelsey was a freshman in UW. Mm -hmm. Nobody still knew about her and so we spent a lot of time in the gym though. So the trust though came with me investing time into her trying to help her improve. And I've known Nate for a long time, played against him, also trained with him. But we've had trust for a long time. Same thing as I invested to him, he 
came and he worked hard, decided I worked hard, so the trust was just kind of built from the other time. By the way, where did you play, coach? I played in a, a D2 called St. Martin's. Okay. And uh, but I had options on a walk on at Portland or Portland State and just uh, chose to take the scholarship and go play D2 basketball. Great experience. And I know that I, I've played against a lot of pros though during my prime, and I think I've fared pretty well. Although I can't jump as high and maybe move side to side as fast. But your handle is nice though. Man, the handle is something that you can train though. So I've always had quick feet and quick hands mm -hmm. and been able to shoot the ball and I've had a high IQ. And that's what's allowed me to play for a long time. That's it. Back to it. So let's go. 10 seconds.
just can you just talk about the basketball culture in Seattle? Oh, the basketball culture, man, it's a special place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just say because you got guys that will win the NBA, people that play like pro basketball, guys and girls, and they don't leave. Like they come back home when they get done, they come back here in the off season, and they're on the ground with these kids. I think in a lot of towns where you'll see guys that play in the league though, but the kids never get a chance to see them. Jamal Crawford, Nate Robinson, Aaron Brooks. I mean, and I'm going to miss out on a lot of them. Isaiah, like they all come to the gym so kids can touch them and feel them and talk to them. And so now as a young kid though growing up, you believe that you can be them because you can see them. They're not like some like fiction character that just is like fake and non-believe. Like it's somebody that's like real that you can talk to that's the same size as them. And so all of a sudden now these kids think that they can go to the league and that's why we've had like a rich like culture in the Seattle area, Seattle to Tacoma area because of people like that, the pros that kind of come back and give back to the kids. I know. Special place. It is a very special place and thank you for accepting me and you know inviting me for this workout. Absolutely man, as long as you want to continue to spread the light on the things that we do, man, you can come anytime. Yes sir. And when I say push up, so if I'm going to have to It is very, very important, especially once you start going to play with like men and older people. And you see this though playing against guys, the biggest difference that you see though is strength. So the biggest difference that you'll see from high school to college is, is, is strength. And if you guys want to start playing against men, 
The thing, you guys are just as skilled as a lot of guys that I train, but the one thing that holds you guys back though is that you're not strong enough to be able to play against them for a full game, how you want to play against them. You guys can play against kids all day long, it's all good. But being able to just invest in the weight room, because you're not going to be you know, stronger tomorrow, you're going to be stronger in a year. You're going to be stronger when you're 22 years old. So like, don't like downplay like what the weight room can do for you right now, long term. It's not gonna help you tomorrow, but it'll help you when you're 21, 22, and now you're trying to play pro basketball. When you've invested three, four years in the weight room, you're ready to go step into a man's weight room. Okay, and I know you guys have heard that probably from like your dad, probably from your coach, and you guys don't think it's a big deal. Invest in it right now, so in three, four years, you're not like, shit, I wish that I would've went to the and then get and all this stuff. So tie in the weight room as much as you guys gonna shoot and do skill stuff, and you guys will be so happy in three, four years when you put that investment in. Okay, all right, good job for that. Thursday, same time. Work on three. One, two, three. All right, work. Thanks, Rocky. Thanks. Well, Malia, how did you wake out? It was good. It was good. How long have you been wake out with, uh, working out with Coach Chris? I've been working out with him since I was like six or seven years old. Oh, wow. Since like I first started playing, yeah. What do you like uh, the most about working out with him? Um, I like how hard he pushes me. Um, I like that we always have new drills and stuff like that. Yeah. You're a baller, man. I saw you this last weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Luke, how was the workout, man? It was great. Well, uh, how long have you been working out with Coach Chris? Uh, this off season. It's the first one I've been working with. What do you want to work the most this off season? What do I want? What, what do you want to work on this off season? Uh, just growing my game in every way possible. Uh, this year, going to a new school and happen to meet up with Chris. So. It's just perfect timing. How, how excited are you, man, for the new school? I'm super excited. Which school again? Uh, I'm going to Everett Trojans and uh, up in Everett. And that's D2? Uh, Juco. Oh, Juco. Well, good luck, man. Next Thank season, you. Man. Appreciate it. Let's talk about the workout today, man. I mean, I thought it was uh, good. Uh, you know, you talk to the kids, though, too. Yeah. But you know, I just, you know, I just try to keep things like uh, set. You know, you, you know, I had a plan. And I try to get to each thing. and. I don't want to be here for three or four hours, and I know the kids don't want to be here for like three or four hours, so just get in and out. But everything from ball handling to footwork to you know creating space, so we played a little bit, then we got some shots up. I mean, I think we touched almost every aspect of the game. I mean, obviously, getting into like handoffs and pin downs and ball screens, we didn't do a bunch of that stuff, but we touched on a lot of like individual skill stuff. And I'm sure all of them enjoyed it, and I'm sure that they all improved as well. So I just try to keep things structured, and try to keep things to the point and make sure things flow. So I thought it was good. I like it though, how you say you don't want to keep everybody here for three hours. No, I don't want to do all that, man. It's just, I mean, now, I mean, maybe, you know, back when I played, mm -hmm. I loved to be in the gym for like four or five hours at a time. But when we worked out, I don't want to work out for four or five hours. During the workouts, I mean, I want things to just be quick, hard, and fast, in and out, and just get it done. And you told me the story that you did camps overseas in China and yeah. South Korea. How was that experience? Though? I mean, man, it was good. I mm -hmm. went over there for the first time. I was in Beijing in May of 2016. Mm -hmm. And I uh, partnered with a company called One Ball. And they have a basketball app. And I probably filmed over 350 drills from ball handling to shooting, passing, footwork, defense, team drills. But uh, just trying to help kind of create like a basketball culture like the US there. And since then, I've been to Beijing, I've been to Shanghai, I've been to, there's a lot of them that I can't pronounce, so I'm not gonna say them. Uh, I spent some time in South Korea uh, training the Samsung Blue Minx, you know, team. Uh, and so I just, I've had some great experiences through basketball, I ran a camp in 2019 in Shanghai area with, you know, Dwayne Wade. And so I've, I've had a lot of, uh, you know, great time over, you know, over there for camps. Indonesia. Indonesia we too, need man. To get, we I need would to love get to him. get down there. I would love to get down there and do it and do a camp. You know, I just talked to him. One, just to inspire youth mm -hmm. and inspire the adults about the game of basketball. And if they don't have shoes, let's do a camp and let's try to give every single kid a pair of shoes and a basketball. If not, I mean, like kids can can play outside though. But we got to build courts outside though for kids to be able to play. Basketball is a great outlet. Not only is it a great game, but it helps you deal with family problems, anxiety, stress, and it gives you an outlet away from real life. And uh, you know, I think it's a, you know just just an important game, as well as baseball, football, but basketball. It can literally change your life, and it can put good into your life, though, and take stress off of real life. So I would love to get out there and do a camp. 
I would love to get out there, man. Let's make, <laughs> yeah, it, happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Coach, thank you so much too, for sharing your knowledge and you know letting me come and film your session today. I really appreciate you, Coach. Yeah, of course. It's all love, man. Thanks, Rocky. Yes, sir. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Uh, yeah. right on.